Welcome back to Gig Harbor Paddling. Today we're talking about hip return. In the paddling stroke, whether you're a canoe or a kayaker, the hip is super powerful and that's what moves the boat. It's actually true for all sports. Today we went through canoe video review specifically and we're gonna see the timing of it and the importance of it and the results of it and the consequences of not having a good hip return or having a late hip return. And so I hope you enjoyed this video and learn a lot. Hip return is when our down legs hip starts moving forward into the setup. So for Cedar in this video, it's his left hip, and the hip return is defined by when he starts moving it back forward. So on this stroke especially, his hip is open, he takes his paddle out of the water, and then he starts bringing it forward. Cedar is actually one of uh, our paddlers on the team who has pretty good reach when he chooses to. And so what I mean by that is how fat can you get your A when you go touch the water. So I think for Cedar, especially given his age in the sport, this is very good. I really like what he does here. He maintains everything. His back does not move. He just falls down more. Hopefully right here is when you start seeing the opening of the hip, so pulling back while the chest is pressing up, but I think it's a little delayed. I wonder if that was tied to how late his hip was. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? He did not press up that early, and so he started pressing up later, and so his hip is open later, so his hip return is gonna be late. He started pressing up a bit earlier. Did you guys see that? And so his hip, had space to move forward. He could have done it more, that's for sure. Buried, press up earlier, hip has space, comes forward earlier. I think you're bringing your hip forward after you take the paddle out of the water. You opened your hip there, you are reached forward right there, right? That's your reach. And I know we're working on rotating and twisting, not just lunging back. <clears throat> And so right here, I don't really see a ton of rotation. I do see you lunging back, but there's, I can see the rotation happen there. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm looking at. I'm looking at her pocket. So right there, there's a highlighted section of uh, her shorts that the sun is on. So you see how it's disappeared there and then it comes, I can see that she's rotated, right? That's, I'm highlighting this because I want that to happen earlier. I want the rotation to happen because you're pulling. So your hip is open here and your hip stays stationary. You just took the paddle out of the water right here and now we start lunging forward again. So if you look at her boat, the tip of her boat in relation to something stationary like on the land and you see it surge forward during the stroke. And now watch as she comes up to the return, it's completely stopped. And then she surges forward again. But we can move the boat in between the, in between the strokes. It's like magic. And it's called hip return. You, s you had your surge forward here. I'm going to identify that your boat is probably parallel to this part of the land. Now let's play it. Yeah. So again, as a result, you're missing out on so much distance per stroke because of that. Free distance, free energy that gives you distance because you're exiting late. It's muscularly hard, right? Because you're forward. If you're more forward in the boat, you have to use your big muscles. Your quad and your hamstring and your glute and your calf <laughs> and your core. So if you guys want more distance per stroke, you have to pay the price, okay? And a lot of you guys 
forget that that's an option to you. And so I want you guys to be focusing on that every single stroke. And you are maintaining a really good bottom arm through the stroke, I think, from the catch. But I would like a much straighter top arm with the early hip turn. Me and Connor have been talking about paddling in a tunnel. And so imagine having walls that if you exited too wide and you let your hand go too far out to the side, you'd smack the wall. You just couldn't, right? So imagine like paddling in a tunnel. It actually might help you have an earlier hip return and it causes you to have smaller top hand circles and it makes everything more direct in the boat driving forward. And so I actually like this for kayaking too. A lot of us get like sideways in our paddling when we get sloppy. And so if you paddle in a tunnel, you're like, oh, I can't like let my exit go too far away. And hopefully you don't, you know, sort of like that. But um, the point is to be vertical, direct pressure down on the water. Number one, your exit's gonna be by your back knee. So that's okay. What I'm concerned more about is what are you doing while your paddle's in the water? So again, going back to Coach Scott's video or video review a long time ago, your paddle's gonna go in negative. What are you gonna do about it? Are you just gonna let it drag itself back with the water or are you gonna use it to come as a backboard? And so I don't, I wouldn't say like your blade is super late, but I do wanna talk about your hip timing, the hip return. So um, looks like you're pretty much finishing your stroke here. Your hip kind of stopped moving backwards, which is good, but you're right. We don't see movement of the hip forward until here. So she does something that a lot of us do where we, after we open our hip, we'll stop our hip so we don't go into uh, the position of doom. Is that what we called it? <laughs> where you're like, your hips are back, you're bent over, and you're still, your chest is still facing the water. So we're avoiding that. Yay, good job. But there's a next step, and that is move the hip forward immediately. Do we remember Ryan's clinic where we had the spring? Have you guys ever, you know those clips for either weightlifting or the handheld grippers? And the spring wants to go out, right? Your hips are springs, they want to go forward. And so, yeah, stop pulling back with your hip when it's time, but do not stay there, ever. Again, it's hard. You have to get out of your comfort zone, your comfort bubble, but the more you do it, you're more, the more your body will adapt, you'll get stronger, everyone's happy. You are doing the right things, just at the wrong times, a little late. And sometimes it's, uh, you think about something else. Maybe the hip isn't the thought. Maybe you think about right here, oh, I gotta start pulling my knee forward, my right knee, okay, my right knee, my right knee, my right knee and you're gonna find yourself forward and ready to brace for the next stroke. I'm really excited to show you guys this video. First of all, we also changed your setting. We noticed that you were like pointing your toe against your foot plate. We want those pieces of equipment, your knee block and your uh, foot plate to be so close that you feel not too jammed in there, but you do not have to use any extra muscle to get pressure. We wanna really have a solid backboard. Um, so we changed that and then we started talking about earlier hips and like rotating them because bone is someone who kind of gets into a lunge and stays there and you have a strong upper body and it works for you for a, a while but you're going to have to start using your legs or else you're going to le get left in the dust. And so he started doing that in this video and it's really exciting to watch and also he's doing really good work with his frame with his upper body so we're going to watch that. Ideally this top hand stay, would stay in this, well maybe actually that's unrealistic, would stay like in this circle. So let's watch what happens. I gave you a really big circle actually, that's not my goal for you, but this is like a medium large circle that he's keeping his top hand in, so I want everybody to see that. Um, a lot of other people think of it as watching them from the back. So instead, what if we were able to have, by the way, look at this reach, this is awesome. Very good, Bowen. Um, what if we had a top hand circle that was more like this? His hip would start moving forward right here and the rest of his stroke is just cleaning up and then he would already be out of the water and he'd probably be have his paddle in front of him right now, and then he'd be reaching out again for a really nice big stroke. So 
I, I, I like this reach. This is awesome, Bowen. Very happy with that. I'm curious what your back hand looks like. It doesn't look terribly bent, so I'm happy with that. Um, and it looks like you're rotated, but I, I bet you're probably just really lunged, and we need to make sure that we're keeping our hips really closed. Let's see what happens when he buries the blade. Does he start pressing up and pulling back with his hip? You do it a little late, so we could work on strengthening our core and doing that immediate. The, the further away something is from your body, the stronger your core needs to be. And so that's another reason why we don't like having an early hip return and getting super far out there is because we have a weak core or weak legs. And when I say weak, I'm saying very relatively. You all are very strong, but when we are talking about our goals. So let's watch the hip here. It stops moving back right there. You take the paddle out of the water. You rest your hands, okay? And then you start r twisting forward Yep, after the paddle. So you have really good reach in the beginning and you lunge back and you press up, but I think we could see more twisting in the hip and quickly twisting back. You do have good reach. I also really like your power in the front and your top hand, your top arm. It could be straighter, yes, but it's not like shooting out. I think you have a really good bottom arm. It stays really straight. I do think the hips are still a little, the, hip, the back is breaking a little early. And then I see the hips just coming back as you come. We're buried here. We start opening the hips. It kind of looked like your hips were open a little bit already, um, but we're late in our press up. So I'll stop right here to kind of explain something. There's a few things, a lot of things happening when you're doing a canoe stroke, right? But what I want you guys to consider is the ratio of how much you're pressing up and how much you're pulling open with your hip, okay? And the ratio of that, I'm just going to say right now is pretty even, one to one. So if you're going to press up with your upper body and your core, you better be opening up your hips at the same rate. We like to open our hips really fast and our bodies don't keep up. So. That's what I want you to think about, Aaron, is I need to press up just as much as I'm pulling back. And that is going to be the connection that we're looking for. I think something you could do, it looks like you, your body kind of lets your hips go to the right a little bit so that you can twist your upper body as you want. Do you see the curve I'm talking about? Whoa. And then that is happening. Because you're letting your, your, your hips go to the right. His bottom foot is not only angled sideways, but it's also placed to the right. And so what I would rather see is a heel straight up in the middle of the boat. I don't know how other teams do it. But I want our kids to start paddling in their canoes for the first time with things aligned. You guys need to have your heel as much in the middle of the boat and your knee block as close to the middle of the boat and you adjust. It might be easier, it might feel better to have everything cattywampus, but that will not help you in the long run. So if you look at your boat today and you see that it's cattywampus, I don't want you to automatically move everything in the middle because it's going to be terrible for you, but I would consider, I would have you consider maybe shifting your foot over on your foot plate or after nationals, which is in a week, moving the hardware, maybe one uh, spot over or something. And so Ben, for you, I would just make sure you think about twisting before you lunge. So twist your left hip forward and then lunge as far as your twisting lets you go. And remember that there's like a wall, you're caught, the, the cockpit of your boat, imagine there's a wall there and your hips and like it physically just can't pass the wall, you know? You start rotating your hip before the paddle comes out, which is good. So I like that. But what I would challenge you to do is don't let your hip go back that far. So his back foot's here and his hip is all, I'm exaggerating my lines, but his hip is like more like that than straight for up like 90 degrees and hopefully even 
forward more. Emma was one of the most immediate responses to when I was testing out this new cue and I said, how low can you go? And immediately I was like, whoa, that's really far. And so what I'm talking about is how low can you reach, obviously while staying connected, obviously without shooting your hip back, obviously keeping everything together. And this is pretty low. Like I can't see her bottom or her top knee. And that's what I mean. If I ever come up to you and I say, how low can you go? That's what I'm talking about. And I'm pretty dang sure she's staying connected. There's a very slight chance you're starting to like round in the lower back, but that's the only thing I can see. Like literally everything I like a lot. And I am curious what your top hand looks like. So that's the only two unknowns I have. Don't, don't even worry though. So she, you can see she's starting to engage her lower back and her hips and rotating. Otherwise she would fall in, right? Now this is a really good stroke example of paddle like you're gonna fall in every catch and then every stroke is you pulling yourself back up and forward out of the hole. So yes, we wanna get low at the catch, but I wanna see an earlier press up, Emma. You start pulling pretty good, but we gotta keep working on pressing up. And again, that's your career long goal is to earlier press up, earlier press up, earlier press up. That's gonna take a lot of strength in the muscles between her top hand and the knee. Like if she's way out here, she's as far as she can get away from her center of mass, everything is working in connection to pull herself back up. And so it's hard. And I want you guys to understand that because it's not gonna be comfortable all the time. So you do pause, like you don't keep pulling back, like you stopped your hip early enough, but again, we don't stop our hip once it's all the way back, we bring it right back forward. 